is DirectX 12 everything Microsoft promises to be? Stick around and find out. What is going on guys? Today we have something a little bit special. As many of you probably know, on the 11th of March, Rise of the Tomb Raider received an update. An update that adds DirectX 12 as a rendering option to the game. Microsoft has since its DirectX 12 announcement promised the PC gaming community a big improvement in performance for DirectX 12 games compared to the previous iterations, namely DirectX 11. This improvement in performance was targeting the players that do not own the highest end graphics cards. This means that graphics cards such as the NVIDIA GDX 970, 960 and the AMD 380 and 270 should receive a pretty significant boost in performance. So let's see what DirectX 12 actually does on a mid-range card such as the NVIDIA GTX 960 and on a mid-range PC for that fact. I have put together a set of charts comparing the in-game benchmark results from Rise of the Tomb Raider in both DirectX 11 and 12. The game has been benchmarked using the PC that is on screen right now at a resolution of 1920x1080 with anti-aliasing disabled. So let's take a look at the charts and then we can compare the results. First things first, as you might have noticed, the very high profile had very different results in comparison to the other profiles. This is because the NVIDIA 960 only has 2GB of video RAM, which is nowhere near enough when the texture quality is set to very high, as that setting requires 4GB or more of VRAM. And since we are not talking about the cream of the crop of PCs here, we are going to take those results out of the equation. Now, talking about the rest of them, we can notice anywhere between 2 and 10 frames per second increase in performance, most noticeable on the high profile, which might just give you that boost in performance that you needed to get those smooth 60 FPS, but frankly at the end of the day, these results are nowhere near what Microsoft was talking about in 2015 and what we as gamers had hoped for. Granted, this is one of the first DirectX 12 examples we have seen, and you can make a case that since the game has been patched to add DirectX 12 support, that it is not a truly DirectX 12 game. Hopefully in the future with developers learning how to use the new API better and through driver updates we will see more impressive results, especially when it comes to us, the gamers with mid-range PCs. But I would like to hear from you guys as well, so please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this benchmark comparison video. If you did, please leave a like, share it with your gamer friends, and if you'd like to see more in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, guys, have a great day!